you to come in. I am going to say thank you to a lot of you for tuning in last week. That was the most that we've ever had. And it was awesome to see about 500 people total seeing the things that I have to teach. So thank you all for doing that. And you guys are awesome. So today's topic is going to be one really close to my heart. And as you can see right here, the topic will be caricatures. What is a caricature, you might say? Well, a caricature is a funny drawing of a person. You take a person's likeness and you draw them really silly. You take a part of their face and you exaggerate it and then you get a really, really, really funny drawing. And people use this a lot for comics. They use it a lot for pretty much every aspect of, you know, illustration. If you're drawing people, if you're drawing monsters, if you're drawing characters, if you're drawing anybody that acts or moves, you would benefit a lot from caricatures. So, let's see. Where do we even start? Oh, actually, we'll start with a little sub, uh, a little sub lesson that, of something that I learned this last week. Uh, they didn't necessarily learn it, but it just clicked and I wanted to share it with everybody. So this is a new I method. And I just noticed you guys cannot see that. New I method. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how to map out the, the eyes on your characters, incredibly simple. And without like all the complications that come with uh, everything that we normally draw. So let's just draw a really quick example. So let's say we have a face, a head. And we're going to do it like three quarter. Now, the first thing that we normally do with every drawing is we identify the midline of the face. So we're going to identify the midline of the face. And after that, depending on the style that you want to do, you are not going to draw a circle to represent the eyeball. No, no, no. You're going to draw a circle or a, uh, a circle, a cutout, that is about the size of your skull, uh, of your eye socket. And, and just, I know it sounds silly at first, but just, just take a look at what happens when you implement this second part. Uh, this second part is going to take into consideration that this gap right here that we're making into the eye or into the face, it's more so like a cone. Right? So we're going to have depth coming into it. And we're going to draw a little ball inside of this cone. So we're just going to draw a circle. And since this is an opening, this is all blocked off, right? The cone is going into the skull, but it's going in. So in this scenario, whenever you draw this side, a little bit of that ball is going to be blocked. So now you have two cones with two little balls in it. So how does this help me like draw the faces easier? Well, most of the time what people have a hard time doing is creating depth within their eyes. And they forget to realize that eyes have curvature both going this way, up and down, left and right, and it also has depth. So most people just draw eyes like this. They just draw the shapes and then continue. That's why a lot of the times drawings look flat. So now that we have this and you know we're drawing three-dimensional shapes, so this is still a sphere that has depth. The little ball, it's a sphere that has depth. 
So that's going to give us every guideline we need to draw our eyes in any way, shape, or form we want. So now that you have this, this outer, this outer shape is just your eyebrow line. Right? That's a great, great measure cap for an eyebrow line. And then you can make that shape into initially any shape you want. So let's say you want to make a person angry. So instead of making this like a circle, you just cut it and make a shape. And then the cup, the ball goes inside that little shape anyways. So you still get a lot of depth. Right? And then you can stylize that in any way, shape, or form you want. But look at how easily it's going to be to show roundness when it comes down to inside the eye. This inner one is going to be your eyeball. Your eyelid goes around the sphere. And then the same thing on this side. It just goes around. So there, see, see? So you end up with something very expressive and it already gives you where the eyelids are gonna be, the little lines underneath. It even gives you like, a good reference for the shadows. And not just that. It's not just that. It's This allows you to set where your cheekbones are going to go, which come a little bit beyond the eye socket. So it already gives you an indication of how the shape of the head is going to be, where the cheekbones are that you can come in and draw the mouth after. And then it just gives you so much so quickly that it allows you to map your faces out really, really, really cool, really fast. And it's going to, like, honestly, it's going to be really, you know, like game changing for me because of the way that I used to think. And it's going to be represented a lot in my art. And I hope that it's for the better. So I'm just testing this little, like, you know, like, stopgap of how I do it. And then uh, I'm going to keep practicing it until it actually looks right. But meanwhile, uh, let's try one more example. And we'll try a different pen. So we're going to do it from the front this time. Just going to draw a quick head. I'm going to draw some ears, and then we're going to draw two random shapes. They're not going to be just necessarily spheres this time. There you go. We're going to add the circle inside one more time, and then we're going to use this as our eyebrow line, eyebrow line. And this time, let's not even put eyelids. Let's just. So it already gives us so many, so many details so quickly. And it's just a really, really interesting way to draw the eyes. Really expressive, really, really quickly. So, and you can do this in any direction, uh, profile as well. Let's just sketch a quick profile face. If you're drawing with pencil, you can be a little bit more accurate. Draw your little cone, draw the ball inside the cone, and then draw around the shape, and then just block off the parts that would be covered. And you have a very cool expressive mouth, or expressive like eyes that look really good so quickly. And it just gives you every piece of information you need for the rest of the face. So I just wanted to share that with you before I did any of the character stuff. Because it's uh, something that just clicked for me. And it actually really made a difference. Um, I've been just playing around with the concept for the last like day and a half. Just playing with different ways to break it. And it seems to work in a very big majority of the situations that I try to break it in. 
And as long as you start seeing things in 3D, it's so much easier to draw so many cool more things. So that is one thing that I wanted to share. If you guys do any of, uh, if you guys do try this and it actually works, please tag me. I would love to see that. Like, uh, it, this is honestly the first time I see somebody break it down kind of like this. So, hey, if I'm not the first one, please let me know in the comments or just message me so I can see how somebody has refined this more. But until then, I'm going to take uh, credit for it because, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, let's go on to the main topic, which is caricatures. And I'm going to explain a little bit of why caricatures are good uh, to know and why it's also something that you have to be cautious about because it can honestly like derail your whole art career uh, really, really quickly if you don't... Uh, understand the limitations of the art form. So, caricatures. Drawing people funny or taking people's characteristics and then making that into a feature. It's a very, very important thing that happens in comics, illustrations, animations, and all that sort of stuff. So, how do we even start to do something like this? Well, the first things that we need are a couple different tools. And it's remarkably cheap to get into doing caricatures. You can honestly just go pick up something as simple as a Sharpie, a Crayola marker, or even just like a soft pencil are some of the most affordable uh, materials that you can draw caricatures with that are very widely used and very, very, very good for it. Uh, the only limitations with some of them is the range that you of uh, lines that you can get. For example, with a Sharpie, you can get normal lines. If you put it on the side, you can get a little bit fatter lines. But as the more you use it, the less able you're able to do that because it loses its tip. So normally, Sharpies, they're good if you're on like in a last ditch effort and you don't really have anything else to draw with, go with those. Crayola markers. Crayola black markers, you can get them as a pack. These are fantastic for caricatures because you can get a lot of thick to thin lines. This one's drawing out a little bit, but you can still get a really good understanding of how much range you can get from a Crayola marker. And they're fantastic because they don't bleed, they don't like smudge, and they don't... You can honestly do amazing things with a Crayola marker. They're incredibly cheap too, so if you ever want to like pick some up, that's a fantastic tool. Now, pencil is always a great tool, especially soft pencil because you can take one of the edges and then just make it into a chisel tip and then you kind of get like a thick to thin thing going. But the beauty of pencil is that you can always just go back in and thicken things up really, really quickly as well. So pencil is a fantastic tool because you can shade, you can smudge, you can do a lot of things that you normally don't get to do with a pen. And you can also sketch very lightly with these, so you can kind of cheat your way out of having to do everything in a single line. Now, on to my, my preferred markers whenever I'm drawing caricatures. The first one is the Chart Pack Super Black Fine Tip Markers. And you can often get these really, really cheap. Uh, like Blick or any other store. And the reason that I like these is because they have a very firm tip. So when you're drawing, you can get really, really light lines, really, really fat lines, or really fat to thin lines. It doesn't bleed. Uh, it doesn't like expand much if you draw quick enough. And it's just fantastic for adding little details and then getting really, really, really good differentiation of lines very, very, very quickly. This is one of the best markers that I've found for just character work in general, and it's the most common one used right now by theme park employees and anybody that works for, like, that does characters probably uses these. And then the other ones that people tend to use are also chart pack, but they use the chisel tip. And these are really, really nice too. You can get incredibly fine lines and you can get ridiculously thick lines and everywhere in between. You can get a nice little calligraphy thing going and it's just a really versatile marker. The only reason that I do not like this is because the tip rotates. 
and I have a heavy hand, so I tend to get oops, little smudges here and there, or like I don't always get the lines that I want because it slips or I put too much pressure. So I reserve these for when I need to fill in really large areas or whenever I really need to cover a very big space. For example, somebody with like an afro or a bushy uh, like mustache or something like that. I would use something like this for that. Now, the last one that I like to use are little brush tip pens. And it doesn't have to be necessarily fabric castle or anything. Any, any brush tip pen is really, really nice because it represents, it just gives you the same thick to thin line that you can with more of a feel of a, an actual traditional pen. So when you're drawing, you're gonna feel a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're not drawing super large. You can draw really, really quickly and get really, really cool detail with a fine, you know, fine tip, the thick to thin lines that you can do. And it's gonna be a fantastic thing. So those are the tools that we can use I am going to focus mostly on just showing you the techniques and the way that I normally approach them. So this video might end up actually being two parts. So because it's a very extensive, extensive amount of knowledge. And then I still have to like at one point show you all the benefits of doing this in the real world. Like I've made countless opportunities and a ton of money just drawing people. So it's a fantastic way to make extra money. But now I'm gonna read some comments. So, Blaze Akuma, sup, what's up, dude? John Cullen, oh, Gillen, hey. Michael Steven Rodriguez, hi, Rodgun. Greetings from Colombia. Well, greetings from San Diego, California, brother. Agustin Mantello, hey, what's up, man? Mary Peril Streep, hey there, everybody, what's up? Garrett Cannon, I actually been using this method for eyes for my tunes. Dope to see that you do this too. Oh, awesome. That's fantastic. That's really cool. Uh, if it differentiates in any way from mine, just shoot me a message. I would love to and like see if I'm missing something in it. Uh, big MD17, big game changer. Well, for me it is too, so I'm really excited to do it. Mr. Fox, can't stay long, but it's really nice live. Oh, you're welcome, man. I hope you can check us out uh, next time, but thanks for checking in. Ballpoint, yellow, Benya art blog. Wow. Hello, legend. Well, hello to you as well. Dennis Ringler, listening to at work. Fantastic. Hello, I love your drawing style. Well, I love you guys too. And that's why I do all this stuff. So, okay. Now, how are we going to approach drawing people? Now, the very basics that you need to get in, uh, in your mind as you start drawing caricatures is that there are no set rules for drawing caricatures. It is something that is incredibly easy to get into, incredibly easy to learn, but incredibly difficult to master. And if you can surpass that stage of uh, weirdness that comes along with drawing people and you not liking how it looks, you will probably end up loving the hell out of this math, like, like this art form, and you're going to be very happy. Now, okay, let's say that you sit down in front of someone and you don't even know how to draw a face. Well, we're going to focus all our drawings on a front view. And what we're going to focus on are three different things. At first, this is what you have to master in order to be able to continue with doing anything of the sort with caricatures. You gotta be able to draw the human jaw. Not so hard, right? Just boop. One, two, three, four, five lines. If you can master how to draw that, you can already start drawing caricatures. It's not very hard. So the first thing that we do, we draw, we try to like, first, you're, we're starting off and we're learning. So we're gonna start with a guide for you to understand what I'm seeing in my head when I start drawing. As I start drawing a caricature, first in my head, I am measuring how big the space is that I have to draw in. Now, if I draw the head too big, 
or it's going to come out of the page, which is not going to make it into a very appealing uh, cartoon. And if you give it to someone, they'll still like it, but it's not going to be the most appealing. So in your head, you have to map out exactly how big your face is going to start. I like to start by drawing this side of the face. So I start with the initial jawline of this side of the face. Then from here, I'm going to go to where the middle of my chin is going to go. So let's say we're just going to have a nice normal chin. Nice, a little bit round, you know, not overly like exaggerated, nothing. Just going nice and passive. And then this side is the other side that's going to match up with the other side that we drew. Now, if you can master doing this, it's going to be very, very, very easy for you to continue doing the rest. Because these little landmarks, each one of these things can tell you where something else is in the, in the whole uh, head. Now, the first thing that I like to draw is it tends to be the ears. Because the ears give me a ton of information of everything else on the drawing. So the ears can be something as simple as that. This is going to give the little indication of the flappy part of the ear. And you can even do this, this little part right here as well as a simple like lightning, like a lightning bolt in the ear. That is going to tell you the top of the ear tends to correlate with where the eyebrows are going to go. The bottom of the ear tends to end where the nose is going to be at the bottom. This little curvature tells you where the mouth is going to be. And those guidelines should tell you most of the information you need to to continue doing the drawing. Now, this is what I'm imagining and thinking about as I'm drawing it. Like, this is what it's in my mind. So this is from repetition. This is from muscle memory. This is from me drawing these same shapes in a million different ways, countless times, just for practice, just so that when I draw and I see somebody that has a certain head shape, I am able to draw it. So it's going to come with a lot of work and a lot of practice and a lot of playing around and, like, distorting shapes and seeing what works, what doesn't. And that's going to be step one, muscle memory and like learning how to do this bottom part of the head. Now, if you take this bottom part of the head and you start distorting the different areas of it, let's say that a person has a very, very, very sharp uh, like cheekbones. I'm just going to draw the cheekbones first into the jaw, into, let's say, a very, very squarish jaw to the other side. And there you go, into the ears. And now we have this, but nice and chiseled with nice, sharp uh, cheekbones as well. The trick with drawing these cheekbones, and this is the, the, the part that was so complex for me when I was learning, like, oh my God, I did not know what the little bump was when, when you're drawing things. like. When you're drawing a head, like three quarter, you know when like people drew that little, like you draw that little bump, this damn bump? I always drew this as the cheek. So the mouth would be like right here. But it's not the cheek, or I mean it's the cheek bone that protrudes. It's not the cheek itself unless you're chubby. Like if you're chubby, then your cheeks protrude a lot. Right? Yay! Wee! But this initial bump, that's your cheekbone. And that was like an eye-opener for me. Like, so I, once I learned that placing these where the cheekbone is, let's say if the cheekbone's there, that tells you where the eye socket is because it just goes around. Remember the eye shape like method that I told you guys right now? That's, it follows that too. So that's where the eye like cheekbone would come in and that's the cheek so 
normally it's around this general area, not down here, that you put that. And please keep that in mind because I didn't keep that in mind for like seven years. So, um, yeah, that's the, the problem with trying to learn on your own. It's just sometimes it's, uh, it's a little harder. Uh, but once you master the side of the jaw, you can change it into a lot of different shapes. Let's go into a different page. Let's say you want to make a person really, really skinny. So, the taller you make the shape, and or the more slender you make the shape, the skinnier it's going to look. You're taking those same lines, one, two, three, four, five, and then you're just adjusting it as you go along. Imagine that's like little silly putty. If you squish it, it's gonna weak. If you squash it, it's gonna go whack. And sorry for the sound effects, but like you, if you squish it, like everything's gonna get squished, right? If you stretch it, everything's going to stretch and get thin. So once we take those concepts into mind, now, like, you know, we start playing around with maybe different features. Um, now we master the bottom. Now we got to go onto the top of the head. So let's say we have a normal bottom part of the head, ears, and now we want to go into the rest of it. Now, the first thing that I'd like to draw is... This is again, this is what I'm imagining in my head, so you guys know where I'm what I'm drawing. The first thing that I go for is the inside hairline. The inside of the hairline is important to map out first so that you understand where the features are gonna go that are centered within the head. Uh, the hair can always be poofy, the hair can always be short, they always can be stylized. You know, the hair can be molded and it changes, so it doesn't have to be a static feature. The hairline, though, does not move on a person, so therefore it's important. Um, from here on out, let's say that they just have like a normal like hairstyle, nothing too complex. And look at very carefully at how I'm drawing the lines. All the lines are Z strokes or like little M's or waves or whatever you want to call it that are alternating and that's how I'm making the hair look ruffled. This little these little shortcuts, these little tiny things that are like, you know, like little overlapping lines and little these are all to indicate something that we cannot put shading on yet. We're cheating a lot of the lighting when it, with the thick to thin lines. For example, whenever you're drawing these lines Normally, you want to have thin, thin parts on top, thicker on the bottom, and then keep that going through the rest of it. What that does it is it gives like a slight indication that there's like a shadow underneath. And when you do that, it's very subtle. It's very, very subtle, but it really plays a huge role when it comes down to creating depth within the character. All right, let me get some water while I read some comments. Let's see what you guys have to ask. <coughs> ah, let's see. All right, uh, let's see. Hello, legend. I like being called the legend. Um, Nezuko, hello. Oh, my God, Radgan, I love you. Oh, that is uh, my beautiful, beautiful girlfriend, uh, Marianne, that normally would be here uh, helping me out with the stream, answering questions and asking them and stuff like that. But she will join us next week when we do part two and then we're gonna be doing examples. And that's gonna be really cool because uh, she's also learning how to do them. So it's gonna be really nice to have somebody that's asking questions on your guys' behalf. Okay, so let's add a neck. And the neck also it's a cartoon, so you can make it really skinny or really big. That's fine. But 
just remember, it still has its roots in real anatomy. So, consider that the neck starts at the back where the ears are in the back. So you draw through your shape and then you add little, little tiny shadows to indicate that the head is sticking out from the bottom, right? So we're gonna practice a couple of these in the next page. So let's make a couple different faces that are normal. You don't have to have perfect symmetry either, like at all. If your line is off a little bit, that's perfectly fine and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, let's, that's just a normal person with normal ears. Um, let's make a skinnier person. And let's give this guy, actually you will make this one a woman and we'll have her like her hair tied back. So when everybody, and if somebody is bald, I just make it a habit of just drawing the entire head because I don't have to worry about the top. And then I draw the hairline. And then since ponytails and stuff like that tend to be in the back of the head, I normally draw them slightly to the side so that you can see a little bit of everything, you know, like the length of it and stuff. If you just draw it in the back or just coming up from the top, it doesn't look right. Uh, this person, let's make them old. So he's going to have really big ears. And they're only going to have hair on the side. Again, all little Z strokes. And it helps making sound effects because it makes it awesome. Uh, let's see. So that's a normal person, a normal girl, an older man. Uh, let's make someone that's really buff. So someone that's really buff would probably have really, really defined cheekbones into a really wide jaw into a really squarish face and then trying to kind of match this side to the other side. Now let's give them a bus cut so you guys see kind of how I would make a bus cut. The bus cut, let's make the hairline first and then it can be lines and then broken into little tiny like grass like lines that's a good way to make really short hair and then let's give them some ears now for this area let's just draw a random big shape and then like let's see if we can make a head out of it right uh another really fun thing that i like to do is just i like to draw random stuff and then out of this, maybe I can make this the chin, the jaw, the ears, and there you go. We came up with something cool. I like keeping things random a lot of the time, uh, mostly because it's uh, it's just fun. It's just really fun to like do like things not conventional. Uh, I think some of the most successful character artists that I have, I, like that I've followed and like worked with, are the ones that just kind of do their thing, and you know, they might not be the most popular like choices in the like theme parks, but as an art form, it's amazing. All right, so now that we have a couple different heads, let's draw their necks. Let's say for a slender, like normal woman, I would make a thinner neck, still having a slight curvature coming in from the ears into let's say just a very very simplified t-shirt that simple it could be that simple an old man maybe has like a couple of wrinkles in his in his neck and he has a polo cool Okay, uh, a lot of these really simple ways to draw things just come from practicing a lot of the times with the marker and then just getting used to drawing them. Uh, it's, it's a pain in the butt sometimes to actually do it. And I understand the frustration that comes with not being able to draw something specific in a simple way. But again, there really isn't any like 
any mistake that you can make with caricatures. So, like, draw people funny. Like, does, it doesn't matter. Just just draw them, and then they'll probably love it. Like, I make it a habit every time that I go around in public to just carry a sketchbook that I can tear pages out of so that I can just give people the drawings. And you get amazing, like, results out of it. Uh, people will buy you drinks. People will, like, you know, want to be your friend. Uh, people will just approach you and have a genuinely grand time by you just practicing your trade, like your hobby. Like you don't even have to be great at it. Just by practicing it, you'll understand how awesome it is to see someone light up with joy because you drew them. And okay, let's continue. Uh, this person has a really big neck. So let's make the neck really big. Really big. Oh, another thing. Characters don't necessarily have to have, like, the little bodies either. Uh, it's, that's also, like, a theme park thing. But uh, you don't have to have a little tiny body with your drawings. Like, you just have fun with it. <laughs> uh, okay, now this guy. We drew a really, really weird shape for the chin. Uh, but he still looks like kind of like Guile from Street Fighter. So we're going to draw like a thickerish neck. And since his chin is protruding so much, I'm just going to make a little bit bigger shadow than I would normally. Now let's get into some details inside the face. Um, let's, let's make the examples and then we'll go back and draw on those. Now, for the inside of the face, that there's a certain order that I like to do things in. Just gonna draw a very, very generic face. And then little T-Rex arms. And a Superman shirt. Okay, so we have a normal basic head for a character. Now, the first thing that I like to do is I like to visually think, what am I going to make fun of in this drawing? Now, I have a couple people that we're going to do examples of in a second. Uh, but just for general placement, realize a couple things. Big eyes means younger. Little eyes means older. Things grouped together tend to represent youth or chubbiness. Youthfulness, like, you know, like that is normally what's represented when it's small. And all these rules can be changed and flipped and turned around, and they're just generalizations. So at the end of the day, you end up kind of drawing the way that you want to. So I like to tell people to just draw in their own style, but keep these things in mind. You want to keep super clean lines clean lines and that means not drawing every single hair that you see it doesn't it means no sketchy lines and it means connecting all your lines which i am at fault of not doing right there all your lines should have a purpose if you see yourself just drawing lines just to like add texture or something, you're doing something wrong. So try to find a way to simplify that process. Uh, a lot of you see that I draw myself all the time. And that's because I really, 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 really enjoy the act of doing caricatures of myself. Uh, mostly because it's just really, really fun for me. <laughs> um, so after you have this, you start mapping out in your head a couple different things. I like to start with mapping out in my head a T shape. And in this case, we're gonna make someone like a, like a rapper or something. So my T shape, I don't like to keep them even. I'm just gonna mark my T shape as something like this. Like in my head, I'm seeing something like this because I want one eye close and one eye a little bit more open. So this is what I'm imagining in my head. And then I try to start drawing the nose. I try to draw the nostrils first. 
and that little tiny bottom part of the nose. Because this gives me the initial planes of the face. Now from here, I can go into my eyes. Well, actually, I go into the nose bridge. The nose bridge is what's going to separate the two eyes, right? It's the one thing that's in the middle. Now, we're going to draw into the two different eyes. I drew two sized eyes. So in my head, I'm already mapping out the, the circles that I talked about in two different shapes. And then inside those shapes, I'm thinking that there's the other circle. So now this eye is going to be closed a little. So I'm going to draw the eyebrow line that it's already mapped out with the shape I drew. And then this one's going to be above where I map the upper circle. The bottom is not really something that we need to worry about drawing out. It's just a measure that you have for when you start drawing the rest of the face. If you guys want to have really sharp cheekbones inside of this shape, you just follow the line that you drew for the, for the eye socket. And now you have a nice defined cheekbone. Now from the tip of these, um, the eyebrow line, it always has a little bit of a curve. And I like to just indicate a quick line, especially if the person's bald or they have a very uh, defined uh, head shape. I always want to mark an indication of where that eyebrow line is because it defines the head from the front and from the side. So it just gives you a lot more depth. Now let's go into the eyes. We're going to keep it super simple. We're going to draw a thick line for the upper eyelid. And we're going to go around the circle, around the sphere, sorry, to draw the bottom lid. Now we have a very expressive caricature with literally very minimal effort. You can add the eyelid by following that circle or that sphere that you drew. And that's going to give you where the eyelid's going to be. Now, the mouth. The mouth, I just discovered a really fun way to draw mouths. And it's really, really fun with caricatures. Uh, because it's kind of like playing with a rubber band. So we're going to set the two points from the sides of the mouth. And it doesn't have to be in the same like plane. It doesn't have to be even on the same like general area. Just set two sides. In this case, let's just give like a, like a thug mouth, right? Like, brrr. So it's going to be kind of compressed in. So those are going to be the two edges of the mouth. Now we're going to draw the top of the lip. The top of the lip is the part that has like that little divot or whatever you want to like call it. I don't know exactly what that divot in the lip is, but in this is this guy's I'm not going to make a conventional shape just so you understand how fun it is to draw mouths like this. The top of the lip. I'm going to draw it like that. Right? It's just the upper line of the upper lip. Now, the bottom part of the upper lip gets drawn inside of this, but coming down into a point at the edges. You see how, how cool and just like defined you get just, just from doing it like that instead of drawing uh, everything else. Now from the bottom, all you do is you do exactly the same. You draw the bottom of the lip by drawing another shape. In this case, let's just keep it nice and simple because we complicated the top. And then you draw the lip inside of that shape. But it's going to be underneath the upper lip. Most of the time, our lower lips are at the edge of the mouth. The upper lip comes on top of the bottom lip all the time. I, th I think that's like a natural thing, but 
If somebody has it differently, let me know. And then just add a little bit of shading. And then you have a really cool mouth. <laughs> you add a little indication of the chin. And all this can be done really easily with the character marker as well. You just have to plan it out in your head first. And then you have a really fun character. Now, in this case, it doesn't have hair, but if you wanted to add hair, that would be where you would use your Z lines to represent where the hairline would go. And then you would establish which way the hair would flow with your lines going in that direction. We don't just fill it in. You don't go, choo -choo -choo -choo. no, that looks like garbage. Little lines, kind of like to keep the rule of three. You know, just three lines gathered up at any given time to give yourself a nice little distribution of line work. Uh, let's say, uh, after you have this, something like this, uh, let's say you wanted to add facial hair. So the way to add facial hair, there's the wrong way and then there's the right way. The wrong way is to just fill it in like that. No, don't do that. Whenever you're doing hair, carefully use Z strokes and change into how the direction of the hair would go. Now, that's if you wanted like a full, like full beard. If you just wanted stubble, all you have to do is do little dots, little tiny dots and you get stubble. So that's a really, really quick like way of how I would think about doing a caricature. Let's do another one, but let's do it based on somebody so you guys can see um, kind of how I would approach it. And I have some fun examples. Uh, so that's the first lady we're drawing today. Uh, okay, but before that, let's uh, look at some comments. Let's see what you guys have. Uh, I'm going to read Marianne's again. Oh, my God, Rodgun, I love you. Oh, baby. Oh, you know, I love you, too. Ah. Uh, those sound effects are everything. <laughs> hey, Rodgun, you're a great teacher, man. Hey, thank you, dude. Uh, I, I try my best. Dan Sketch, you're awesome, Rodgun. You're awesome. Benja Art Block, regards from Chile. Hey, man. Hi, everybody from Chile. If you have anybody from Mexico City, make some noise. That's where I come from. Uh, I still have problems with the sketchy lines part sometimes, especially when setting off the base to work off. It happens. It just comes from confidence and just doing it like over and over. Brandon Madding, hey, RT done. So, oh my God, I am enjoying this lesson. I'm glad you are because um, I think this is a fantastic lesson for most people to learn. And I'm really happy that people, I'm actually finally doing it. It's been years for me, like saying that I'm going to do this and I haven't. It's like, we just happen to be drawing at the same time. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. Let's see. Corey from Jamaica. I don't understand shadows. I feel like I kind of do, but then I get stumped when it comes down to shading. Well, um, I'm not going to go into shading in this lesson because I don't think it's needed. Uh, you can really do a lot of character work without knowing how to shade anything, just by doing line work. So let's focus on that for today, and then we'll like focus on a lesson with more detail in the shadows and, and everything like that. You shouldn't focus too much on the details if you're having trouble with the line work. That should it's pretty much you know how you should see it. Oh, have you ever done a caricature of the customer was not happy? A ton of times. Uh, there's been people that rip up my drawings. There's been people that try to beat me up. There's people that have cussed me out. They have people that I have called security on because, you know, they're not very happy with their stuff. And, well, I'm, I'm not a very apologetic person. <laughs> so um, whenever they would come up and, like, I would draw them, they'd be like, oh, my God, am I that ugly? And I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, you are. And then with a smile, and then they wouldn't really like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you have any inking tips? Do you ink with one straight line or 
scratchy piece by piece lines. If I'm doing caricatures, I try to do it one swift line. If I'm doing inking with like a ballpoint pen, I do all miniature lines until I get the perfect line. Okay, okay. So we have this crazy looking lady or dude or I think, I don't know what he is. But let's have some fun with him. So the first thing that I noticed from them, from him, him, shim, I, I honestly don't know, is the crazy looking eyes. The crazy looking eyes, the bags under his eyes, the ears sticking out, and the hair is all messy, right? So, and the neck is pretty cool too. So we gotta pick and choose, and I normally like to try to pick three things to exaggerate on a person, and then base my drawing based on that. So the first thing that we would do, in my case, it would be to start with what I said, the shape of the head. So in this case, it would be something along the lines of this, right? We have foom, 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 foom. Now, it looks very basic now. Let's draw the ears, and the ear is gonna be one of the features that I wanna exaggerate. So I'm gonna draw the ears really, really young. And this one's getting kind of blocked with hair, so I'm not gonna draw it completely. So we have our ears, crazy ears. Now from here, um, let's draw the neck. So it's gonna be a really long and like veiny neck. So let's, let's draw a neck into just a couple little like lines to indicate that there's a shirt. Okay, now the next step we're gonna draw is we're gonna draw the inside hairline. So this person has like a little M looking shape to her hair. Goes up, curves in, down, up, curves in again. So we're gonna keep that in mind. And her hair is kind of messy, so we're gonna do a lot of Z-strokes. And now we have the inside hairline. Now we're gonna go into the outside hair. Now that we establish where the middle of our head is, we can like start going and seeing how we want that outside hair to look. Using Z lines and just Z strokes, just like kinda generalize the look of things. Trying to get the flow of the hair and even if all the lines don't necessarily connect, her hair or his hair is super crazy, so it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm just gonna put some lines coming in, just going all over the place, maybe some loose hairs. Just adding to the craziness that her hair has. We're gonna add a little bit of that shadow here because it just adds a little bit. And now we're gonna go into the fun part. It's going to go into all that craziness as the eyes. So her eyes are relatively large, but, and they're really close to her eye socket. So what I'm gonna draw first is the nose. And then what I notice with the nose that she has is that it's a big bulbous nose and then the nostrils are underneath. So I have to represent this nose like that has a little ball right here too. So I gotta represent this nose in a simple way. So, and let's see, is it relatively big for her head? No, but the T that I see is relatively like a fat T. That's what I see when I see this area of the head. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Draw a nose relatively small. the little wings of the nose into the big part of the nose. Into the nose bridge. That's gonna curve in. And now we're gonna draw the mouth, which is really simple because she has like the puckered up mouth. And her lips are like parting in. And now the eyes. You know how we were thinking of the circles? 
We're still thinking about that here. Try to generalize the shape of it. In this case, we're going to draw the eyes a little bit more buggy than anything and really close to each other because we have the fat T, right? So we're going to do that. So that would be the general area that we wanted. Now, we're going to draw the top of the eyebrow, which is pretty thin in her, in his, her case. Like, you can barely see any hair, so we're just going to draw really, really tiny lines for it. Now we're going to draw the inside of the eye, or the eyelid. And draw the other one. And draw the bottom. We're going to give her a bunch of little squiggly lines to, like, give her, like, the zombie look that she has right there. has a couple wrinkles and the cheekbones are pretty clear to find they kind of suck that so now you see like kind of how you can make your cartoons kind of look like that and just make like a funny drawing of the person now let's uh, go on to the next person oh yeah oh yeah this guy so now when you're drawing three quarter like people, or when you get somebody that's not looking in the same direction that you want them to be looking in, uh, it's really important to, um, this is where the practice comes in. So let's say that this person is just looking constantly in three quarters, but I have to, I want to draw them in the, from the front view. So in this case, I start looking at everything else, right? It seems like he has a very normal jaw, so I'm just going to draw a normal jaw. And this is going to be the one that I draw a quadrillion times, doing my memory, you know, just trying to, like, figure out exactly, like, getting the measure of it. Now, he has really funny things going on above his ears, but you can still clearly see that he can see all his ears. And they're kind of shaped like this. It has, like, a hole. Or something. So I'm just going to assume that the other ear is going to be the exact same. So you start mirroring it on your head just as you start seeing and putting together the elements. Now, he has really funny hair. Like, uh, little, like, curly, like, frizzy hair. You can do little tiny, uh, like, coils, coil lines. And then if you put them together a lot, they end up looking like curly hair without it being too messy. So in this case, he has that. He has like a clown thing going on, a little bit of hair going up, and then he has a little bit of hair showing right there. So we're gonna just replicate this on the other side. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to show that it's there. Okay where he's bald as well, so it just makes our life easy. And now look at his face. This is the reason that I chose this drawing. Um, if you're drawing people that have like really distinctive like, like funny faces, uh, overly exaggerate that. So in this case, I'm kind of seeing like the downward like eyebrow with the raised eyebrow on the other side type of thing. And then like a little Zoolander type of like mouth. So that's what I'm going to aim for when it comes down to the drawing. I'm going to exaggerate that. Okay, so let's go with this nose and let's pick apart the T, you know. So the T indicates to me that it's relatively wide. It's like as wide as it is tall. Kind of, kind of like that. So I'm going to measure out where the bottom of my nose is going to be by checking where I drew my ears and then I'm going to draw the features based on that. His nose is relatively round so I want to make sure that it has a roundness to it and his nose bridge is relatively straight but not very 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 like edgy like not very defined 
So I'm just going to draw the tops of it like that. Now I'm going to go into the eyebrows in this case because I'm going to make them overly exaggerated in the look that I wanted. His eyes, very squinty. And you can see a little bit of his eyelid on each side. And now his mouth. His mouth. Now, if you start getting used to seeing the, the edges of the mouth going around as a rubber band, it's going to be really simple for you to do these types of mouths. Uh, essentially, you establish where the edges of the mouth are going to be, where the cheeks are going to dig in. And then I see a big curvature in the middle. So I'm just going to start with that, and it's going to dig into the other one. So that would be my top like line of the mouth. He doesn't have a very defined upper lip, so instead of drawing that upper part of the lip, I just draw the upper part of the mouth. And then his mouth is kind of like doing this curl thing to the side, which means that I have to show a little bit of depth from the bottom lip, but the lip still ends up in the same position over here. So as long as you follow those same lines, like a rubber band, so in this case it's like this, you get that really cool look. And now he has a little bit of facial hair on the bottom. It's very stylized. And then he has a bunch of lines going, you know. But the more lines you add, the more you risk with making the drawing look old, the drawing look bad. So in this case, I would probably just keep it like that. Right. And let's see, one more example. Ah, yes. <laughs> This guy was awesome. Okay, so a lot of people are afraid to draw people that are overweight. And certainly so. Nobody wants to insult anybody. Nobody wants to make somebody else look bad or feel bad. But whenever you draw people, you have to draw them as they are. And if, you know, they are, like, especially when it comes down to the shape of their head, if you drew this guy with a close chin, it wouldn't look like him. So in this case, we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Understand that everyone that I've ever given a caricature to has still had a sense of humor about it, even if they didn't really like it. So you should still aim to draw what you see instead of what you think the person's going to want to see. So when it comes down to a really large person like this, I would start the same way. But in this case, instead of having a jawline right here, my, I am looking at the shape that's going to encompass his body or his head. In this case, I'm going to draw all the way into the bottom part of his neck because that's where I see a segmented section, right? So I'm going to draw from that ear into rah. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to close it right here just by an overlapping line just to show that there's even more like just exaggerating the motion now I'm gonna draw the, the top of the head since he's bald baby ears because you can barely see the ears and we're gonna exaggerate that so it looks even more so like that uh, at this point I'd probably just draw the hoodie by just drawing overlapping lines really quickly. You can give the indication of something even though you're not drawing a lot of detail. So something like that could just give the appearance of a hoodie. Remember, we're trying to do these quick. We're trying to do these efficiently so that, you know, you can get a tip, you can get a drink, you can just, you know, start talking to someone. You know, it doesn't matter what the purpose is just you know effectively cheating by creating the illusion of something with your line work 
Okay, so now we have this. Now I'm going to try to look at what the T is on him. So I see something like that. So I'm going to overly emphasize the nose and probably the mouth. And then everything else is already exaggerated, so I don't want to like put too much exaggeration in there. So in this case, the nose is going to be pointing up a little bit. So you see a little bit of the nostrils and you're going to see a little bit of the top of the nose like that. If you're breaking it down into like shapes, so you understand like the perspective of it, it's kind of like that. Okay. And it's gonna be the biggest feature of his face. So I very, very lightly had depth with little tiny indication lines like this. Uh, they have a purpose as to break down the planes of the face. Uh, if you do too much or you make them too heavy, that's when you end up losing the, like, the appeal and it just starts looking weird. Uh, in this case, he has very full lips, so I'm gonna draw the top of the lip whenever I'm doing my, my measure. And I'm gonna start here, and I go here, because he still has like the, kind of like the pursed up lips. And then he has the divot, and then it curves up like this. Boom, with these guy, with this guy. Instead of curving up like that, it curves the other way. So we're gonna establish the middle, and then we're gonna curve down, and then it goes into the edge. We're gonna draw the middle part, or the actual depth of the lips. And then we're gonna go with the bottom up as well. You're gonna establish the cheek lines since he is a little bit overweight, you would see him a little bit more. You can see the chin and how like little tiny overlapping lines like this can make it look even more so pronounced. The little indication of his cheek and then into his eyes. His eyes are relatively far apart from each other. So it's normally, I like to space them evenly, but in this case, we're gonna try to play around with it a little bit. And as you can see his eyes, he go, it goes from down, curves around, and then comes back up. So it's more like that. So we're gonna do that, but we're gonna try to exaggerate it a little bit more. We're gonna just close his eyes a little bit more. We're gonna draw the other eye. See, in this one, you can't really see the top of the eyelid, so we're not gonna really do much for it. And then he has very thin eyebrows. But he has a very pronounced brow muscle. And he has a little bit of hair. But it's not enough to like warrant drawing lines, so I just gonna stick with stuff. A little bit of lines right there, and you know, overall, not bad for a quick caricature. This is something I would probably give to a person that I'm, you know, drawing on the street. So, I want you all to go out and, if possible, take a little sketchbook like this and start drawing random people on the street and giving them the drawings. I promise you that they will absolutely love the fact that, first of all, somebody made a piece of art for them. Second, they're going to absolutely love the fact that, you know, someone put them first and someone thought of them. Even if it's not the best drawing, m most people will be incredibly gracious as to you for giving them something that made their day a little bit better.
And with that, I am going to call it a wrap for this video today. And we will go into a little bit more advanced version of this video in the next stream. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be here for a lot of time. And I would really love to have actual live people as an example. So I'm going to try to get some people here so I can show you guys better. And with that, I would like to do two things. Number one, check out the character designer book from 21 Draw. I have a huge part in it, and I teach you all how to age your characters. And this was one of the most awesome tutorials that I've gotten to do. So I highly, 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 highly recommend this entire book for anybody that's trying to learn. It'll help you out a lot. And number two, I just want to say thank you. Honestly, I, I look forward to doing this every week. Um, there was a very, very, very large amount of my time before when I didn't really uh, feel like I was good enough to teach you guys anymore. So I studied a lot and I took a lot of time refining what I knew and how to teach it so that I could proceed and be a little bit better with the education that I was putting forth. And I think I've gotten to the point where I am actually able to showcase that to you all and share all my knowledge so that we have more generations of more inspired artists out there. I encourage everybody to teach someone how to draw something. It's going to make you a better artist. You're going to help somebody draw a little bit better and have a happier life. And I think that that's something that we all should do. So thank you all again for tuning in. Uh, if you guys are wondering what the sketchbooks are, they're Danique sketchbooks, and they're fantastic. And you get 15% off with Rodgon15 if you guys go to their website. So they are fantastic. Again, thank you all so much. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. We're almost at 40-something thousand people. Every subscription gets me closer to that uh, 100K subscribers that hopefully will allow me to maybe sometime at some point in the future be able to just do teaching full time. But until then, have a wonderful night. I love you all. Have a fantastic rest of your Monday. And I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.